All right, let's get started. 7.05, MIT time, five minutes after seven. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? All right, seeing thumbs up uh, on stream side. Uh, we're also streaming this on Twitch if you guys don't want to trek through the code in future lectures. Uh, all right, seems like audio is working there. All right, thanks for everybody for coming out tonight. Tonight we'll be launching Battle Code 2023 Tempest. Uh, let's get started. I'm Andy. I'm one of the co presidents of Battle Code. And with me today, I'm Ian. I'm the academics here. All right. So first, before we get started really and launch into what exactly this year's game is, let's talk a little bit about what Battle Code is. Uh, hopefully everybody here knows what Battle Code is. I'm assuming you guys signed up or somehow got this email, uh, or maybe you're also just here for the pizza. I respect that. MIT dining during IEP is meh. Um, but Battle Code is MIT's largest AI competition. We run every January for a month. We release a new game every year and teams of one to four have a month to do what they can with this game and come out on top. Uh, teams compete, as I said, in size one to four and it is entirely in Java. Battle Code is also a six unit IAP class. If you guys are interested, uh, please register or pre-register now for the IAP course or course number 69610. Uh, and you can do that at your earliest convenience. Uh, more importantly, even if you're not an MIT student listening on stream, make sure to register your team at play.battlecode.org, where we'll be having all of our resources, our specs, our maps, etc. Before we get started, let's first talk about our sponsors. A big thank you to every single sponsor that helped us fund our tournaments and servers this year. This year's game really wouldn't be possible without them. Uh, in particular, thank you so much to our gold sponsors, Regression Games and Argus Labs, our silver sponsors, Hudson River Trading and Jane Street, our bronze sponsors, Dropbox, Quanco, and DE Shaw, and our supporters, the uh, ITZ and the Wilkins family. Also, a big thank you to all of the devs. Uh, the 18 devs have really put together a lot of time and, and effort over the last semester to make this possible. And this really wouldn't be possible without all of the effort that the three teams have put in uh, over the course of the semester. We have a few devs in this room. I don't know if they want to introduce themselves. Uh, as I said, I'm Andy, that's Ian. We have uh, Maggie, we have Hank, we have Ellington, uh, and a lot of devs just chilling on the street. And Nor. And Devin. I saw you. Hiding in the crowd. Anyways, uh, class logistics. Uh, every weekday for the first two weeks, we're going to be holding lectures at 7 p.m. EST. Lectures will be around one to two hours in 32.155, the room right here. If you guys can find your way here, um, hopefully you guys will have better luck. Um, we'll be live streaming to our Twitch channel, and we'll be holding office hours after every lecture until 10 p.m. We have office hours at 8 to 10 p.m. listed on this slide. Uh, it's really dependent on how long the lectures take, but you can expect at least 9 to 10 p.m. will be office hours every day, uh, and 7 to 8 will be lectures. Uh, as mentioned before, Battle Code is a six-unit IAP class for MIT students. So there's two ways to pass the class for credit. Uh, either you can, uh, your team can beat a, a reference player, which we'll be releasing in week three, this is a pretty simple robot that we work on during lecture, make a few upgrades to internally, or you can write a two page report explaining your team's strategy and approach throughout the year regarding our game. And finally, some important dates. The first tournament will be sprint one in January 17th. Uh, this one is coming up pretty quickly and it's just a great way to see how the meta has developed and what strategies teams are sort of encountering at the top level. A week after that, we'll be holding Sprint 2 once again so that we can see what sort of strategies have evolved and what seems to be strong. Coming into the qualifiers, we have three qualifiers from January 28th to February 1st. We have our international qualifiers for our fully international teams, uh, those across seas, just to compete against uh, each other for the finalist spots. We also have our US qualifiers. These are just for all of our US teams to compete and see who can fight for the uh, finalist spots within the United States. And on February 1st, we'll be holding our newbie and high school qualifiers. 
Uh, the newbie is the newbie qualifiers are for the MIT uh, are for fully first year MIT students uh, for MIT students who are competing for the first time, uh, and the high school qualifiers are for completely high school teams. So if your team is composed of either of those, look forward to competing in these. And finally, everything comes together on February fifth for our final tournament. This is just a very fun time. Everybody should come by and watch or come by and watch the stream. And it's just a great time to see all of the uh, all of the teams come together at the end and compete at the final tournament. Uh, we'll also be releasing a few practice materials. As mentioned, we have our reference player, which is released during week three of the competition. This is the bot you need to beat in order to get a pass in the class, uh, or you can also write your report. We also offer scrimmages against other teams. This is just a very fun, low stakes way for teams to compete against each other and see where they rank amongst other teams, how well their strategy is performing, and also try out new strategies. These are automatically generated when you request them. And we also have an internal ELO, which is used to seed our tournaments. So it is worthwhile to sort of try out scrimmages and get a good ELO from that. Uh, from that, you can get the match replays, which you can download to analyze sort of what your team did well what your team did poorly and sort of see what you can take from the enemy team uh, over the course of the match. Now we'll be talking about our actual game this year. Okay, now we've gotten all the boring stuff out of the way. Now we get to the good stuff. Now we get to talk about what this year's game is gonna be. This year, Battle Code 2023 is called Tempest. Lightning booms in distance and mountains crack as they ship the belt. Vampire anomalies destroy the very fabric of reality, spurned by the misuse of mutation and alchemy. In a last ditch effort to save humanity, alchemists have turned open unstable portals to a new universe built of beautiful floating islands and time bending tempests. To anchor the dying universe to this bountiful world, humanity must take to the skies and explore the mysterious laws that govern them. But you're not alone. Escapees from another reality have fled to this world as well and seek to take it for themselves. The battle of realities has begun and only one will survive. You find yourself surrounded by skylands. Careful scientific investigations into them has revealed that they have the power to anchor realities, which is exactly what you need to save your own. Scientists at headquarters have designed an ingenious device for the skylands called reality anchors. By building reality anchors at headquarters, you can capture a sky lens and help protect your own reality. However, you must defend your own reality anchors as enemy robots can remove them by standing on the island for a period of time. If calculated that if you capture 75% of the sky lens, your reality will be saved forever and you will win the match. It is up to you to capture these islands and prevent your opponent from doing so. So now we're going to get into what a typical battleground is going to look like for a match. It is full of obstacles that you need to either avoid or exploit and use to your advantage. First up, we have clouds. Clouds are large white swaths of air that are difficult to traverse through. They slow down robots that are on them, and they also inhibit their vision, meaning it is difficult for robots inside of clouds to see. In general, they may be undesirable to be in. However, clouds also lower the ability of outside robots to see inside them. So robots can use clouds as camouflage and clouds can be a powerful tool for a surprise attack when the enemies least expect them. We also have currents, which are made up of pink time accelerating winds, meaning any robot standing on a current is sped up. Currents have wind that flows in a specified direction, meaning at the end of their turn, Robots move in a direction specified by current. Using currents wisely is vastly important as you will find that your robots move much quicker if you abuse currents. Wells contain resources of a particular type, which teams will need to withdraw and bring back to their headquarters to be able to build robots and anchors. It is important for teams to defend and find these wells or they risk having their production shut down. Islands are these groups of diagonally shaded black tiles. Teams can place reality anchors here to capture the island for themselves and get closer to victory. However, enemy teams can also take control of your islands if you leave them undefended. 
The atmosphere of Skylands changed color from shades of red to shades of blue to reflect a team that currently has control of the islands. Finding, capturing, and defending these islands is of critical importance. Some scrims have strong storms and raging tempests that are too dangerous for robots to pass through. They're, improvised, they're marked in full black to emphasize their impassibility. Maneuvering around these obstacles is crucial for quickly reaching a target location. So now we will get into resources. Valdico this year has three different resources, adamantium, mana, and elixir, which you obtain by withdrawing them from a well with a carrier. Each well starts with a specific resource type and has an unlimited amount of that resource. So you don't need to worry about a well running out of resources. However, not all resources are equal. Elixir wells do not naturally spawn, so they're not accessible at the beginning of the game and they're intended to be a late game resource. Using Elixir leads to more powerful effects than just adamantium and mana. To create an Elixir well, you can either throw in mana to an adamantium well or throw adamantium into a mana well. So throw in the opposite resource. And then once you upgrade a well into an Elixir well, they no longer produce the original resource. You can also upgrade wells using the same resource to be able to withdraw resources faster from them. And now we get to the cutest part of the presentation, the robots. Hello, these are your robots for this year. There's six of them and we'll be going through each of them. Article 2023 is about taking to the skies of a foreign world filled with mysterious elements and dangerous terrain. This year's teams are tasked with capturing and defending the floating islands located around the world, well, world using a fleet of well-organized robots. Robots can perform several actions such as moving, attacking, communicating, and more. Each robot has a certain amount of health, and upon hitting zero, the robot will be destroyed. So each team will begin, will begin with several powerful and immovable headquarters from which they can operate from. Headquarters are the core of each team and can store resources, craft robots, and permit communication. Headquarters cannot be destroyed or moved, and thus it is essential for teams to play around their headquarters and utilize them as pillars of defense. Next, we have the carriers, nimble transportation robots that can quickly navigate terrain and move resources between locations. Unlike previous years, resources this year must be carried and defended before they can be used by a team to craft objects. Should a carrier be attacked mid-transport and be destroyed by the enemy team, the obtained resources will fall into the void and be permanently lost. Carriers are useful adamantium-based robots capable of extracting resources from resource wells, carrying these resources back to headquarters for crafting and uh, planting anchors to capture the essential sky islands. By nature, carriers are swift and adept at weaving in and out of fights, but as they become burdened with more materials, they will become slower and must be defended from enemy attacks. Carriers also have a last ditch measure they can use to defend themselves, ejecting all of their materials to attack when in a pinch. Next, launchers, powerful single target strikers crafted by gathering mana into un unstable concentrated mass. Launchers are the general purpose attackers of this year, capable of unleashing irreparable damage on enemy robots at single target locations. Use these robots wisely to defend enemy fleets from the locations you need to defend. And lastly, among our first tier robots are the amplifiers. Scientists of your civilizations have developed a method to connect all ally robots together in a shared information database. However, unexpected gusts of powerful anomalous wind have created interference within these systems. Luckily, all robots contain sufficiently strong built-in receivers to read from the central database to communicate. And so they have the ability to have read access at all times. Unfortunately, transmitters are too weak in order to send signals at long distances alone. The amplifier uses, utilizes adamantium and mana to boost a transmitting signal from nearby ally robots, allowing robots to transmit even when they are away from a headquarter. These robots are essential to maintaining a strong communicative network between all your robots, avoiding ambushes, rallying unified attacks, and uh, communicating vital information. Thus far, all of our robots have been crafted using adamantium and mana and are accessible from the very start of the game. However, Elixir is a resource that is not accessible at the start of the game and our last two robots 
are powerful time bending force, uh, utilize powerful time bending forces in order to app, uh, out, affect the outcome of fights. Boosters utilize anomalous elixir based manipulators in order to create time accelerating zones around them, speeding up all ally robots around them substantially and allowing for faster movement and actions. These time accelerated areas will only affect ally robots, making them a powerful tool in both combat and supportive measures. And finally, last among our robots, we have the destabilizers. Offensive variations of the boosters that create time decelerated fields that instead affect the enemy robots. Within these destabilized areas, robots will move more sluggishly, allowing ally robots to grasp advantages even when outnumbered. Eventually, a destabilized space will dissipate, damaging all robots contained within it. Now for our anchors. In order to actually capture the sky islands populating this new world, teams have to craft anchors and control them and defend them from enemy robots. Normal anchors are crafted at headquarters using adamantium and mana, and they allow for communication and control of islands. Carriers can carry anchors to unoccupied sky islands to plant it, taking control of the island. Teams can then destroy enemy anchors by pushing enemy robots off islands and occupying it with their own. Besides the default anchor, a special kind of anchor can be crafted using elixir, accelerating time for all ally robots near the island, allowing for faster movement and more effective defense. These accelerate anchors are powerful for defense and make sure to use them to maintain control of islands. The specs can be found on our website at play.battlecode.org. They should be released now and you can check them for more details on how exactly different robots interact. Uh, to get started, uh, the first steps are to install Java 8. You can find these instructions on our website. Uh, that code runs off of Java 8, and afterwards you can download the competition scaffold. Uh, the competition scaffold will include a sample player, which you can modify to start off with your robot. It has a basic package of how you can operate your robot and also our Java docs, which you can use to see what functions are available to you. If you have any questions, I recommend joining our Discord channel. Our Discord has a lot of devs active and they can answer any questions you have as well as past competitors. And for bug reports, you can create a GitHub issue or report it on Discord. Uh, you can register once again at play.battleco.org. And if you haven't done so already with your team, I recommend doing so now. Okay. So we know a lot of people still do not have teams. So if you're in person, make sure you're gonna go up to the top, like the front here, and you're gonna grab the pizza. Make sure to talk to new people, meet new people. We have a lot of devs. We have some past competitors I recognize. Make sure you talk to them, see if you wanna be on a team with them and just socialize. Uh, if you're online, make sure you join our Discord. We have a team finding channel. Uh, I see a lot of people have already put like their own introductions there. Make sure to either introduce yourself there or reach out to some people who have already posted about themselves. And we've also opened up a few voice channels in the Discord. So hopefully they should be available. If they're not like uh, accessible, let us know and I'll open them. And make sure to just like hop in, talk to people, socialize. And that's all. Thank you guys all for coming to the first lecture of Battle Code. You guys can start going up to the peaks if you want. And we hope to see you guys again tomorrow, same place, same time. And we're going to start talking about a crash course for Java. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.